Now we start the keynote se session. In the first part, Mr. Vitor, Mr. Uh, Ms. Yai, and uh, Ms. Yildirim will be on the stage. Before our first speaker, Mr. Vitor, I'd like to share a few notes about him. Mr. Vitor is the general manager of uh, the European Algae Biomass Association and visiting professor in Catolica Porto Business School and School of Art in Catholic University in Porto. He is also co-founder and board member of the Algae for Future, an international reference co company in the sector of macro and microalgae technologies and bioengineering. Vitor is a mentor of several companies that he also co-founded with partners in different sectors. He started his first, my, first microalgae biotechnology company, Necton, March 1989, which is now is uh, now an European leader in the production and sale of traditional sea salt and fluoride cell, as well as the production and microalgae for uh, uh, aquaculture and cosmetics. Between 2000 and 2050, Vitor was involved in the management of SpinLogic, an entrepreneurship program and business incubator from the College of Biotechnology in the Catholic University in Porto, where he followed to support more than 200 startup projects. He designed, promoted, and participated in more than 60 research and development projects along the last 30 years. Since the EO FP4 and interact, uh, interacted with more than 2,215 uh, organizations in Europe. He is author and the co-author of more than 50 publications in a wide range of topics. I invite him to the stage to give his speech title, State of Art Review for Current Industry Status and Market Application for Micro and Macroalgae. The floor is yours. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, even if we have uh, very difficult circumstances that you all know, but it's my pleasure to, to make this presentation. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank to the organization for inviting me. Um, my task uh, is uh, uh, very large, so uh, I will speak. I will speak uh, about a wide range of topics uh, from the industry status uh, to the market applications. Uh, and finally, I will speak a little bit about uh, uh, regulation and the, the future products. So, uh, covering all these topics will take some time. So, um, I start to ask you some patience because I, I need to go very fast because I have uh, many slides. So, first of all, uh, it is important to tell you uh, what is our understanding, that is uh, a global understanding about what are algae. And uh, algae uh, are uh, in two do big domains, uh, the prokaryontes and eukaryontes, and uh, cover um, four of the seven recognized phylum that, that exist at the moment, uh, the kingdoms that exist at the moment in many different uh, uh, phylum. So, uh, algae is not a scientific name, Algae is not a taxonomic name. It's a global name uh, that uh, includes a wide range of organisms. So it's very important to, to have this into account uh, and consider that uh, uh, um, not all algae are photosynthetic, uh, but most of them are. And they are a common name that uh, groups all of these uh, uh, organisms. So said, uh, uh, said this, uh, let's go to, the, um, to, to speak about the industry status. So when we speak about the industry status, we, we need to, um, to understand that there are two main groups of algae in the world. There are the microalgae, also called seaweeds, and the microalgae, uh, very small uh, organisms. The microalgae can be as small as one micro or even smaller, and the seaweed can be uh, as large as uh, 40 meters. So kelp, uh, which is uh, 40 meters uh, long. So very large, uh, very large organisms to very small organisms. So the industry applications are very wide, and let's go uh, through all of them in a in a short short way. So 
First, it is important to understand what are the production platforms. Where do we grow this uh, algae? Uh, I hope that in the end you have a, a global idea about uh, all of these. Uh, so, platforms. For the macroalgae or seaweed, we have three main platforms. We can grow them in the ocean, we can grow them in lakes uh, or in ponds. So let's see some examples of each of these uh, uh, platforms. First of all, uh, growing the, the seaweed or al macroalgae in, um, in the ocean. Here we have an, a, an example in uh, uh, China. So you see that there are hundreds of vectors where uh, floating devices uh, are growing the, the macroalgae. And further on, I will say always macroalgae and microalgae. I will not say seaweed. Uh, so here we, we see in more detail in other places, not, not only China, but here we see in Zanzibar or in the uh, coast of Africa, in the, uh, in the Asian countries. So you see that uh, to grow the algae, we need also um, shallow waters, uh, not very deep, where, where uh, workers can, can, can be. And this uh, picture is uh, very important to tell you that the algae seaweed contribute, as Berat mentioned, very, very much for uh, uh, sustainability in the social level. So they provide jobs for uh, a large number of people. Um, here we see again, uh, also in uh, Africa, in coast of, coast of Africa, uh, many uh, seaweed production. Uh, here we go back to Asia. So this is in uh, uh, South Korea. So again, uh, thousands uh, of uh, these uh, small floating devices that cover hundreds of hectares uh, in, uh, and produce uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of tons of um, macroalgae. But we can also grow uh, these macroalgae in ponds. And these are some examples. Uh, here we see uh, Acadian sea plants in Canada. You, you see uh, also uh, Sikura in Israel, um, Alga Plus in Portugal. Um, and um, uh, another company, I don't recall the name, in um, South Africa. So we have the possibility to grow in ponds, and uh, this is a, a growing trend to grow the macroalgae in ponds. The reason is because we can control the, the culture conditions and the reproduction cycle. Here, uh, we can also uh, harvest the, this uh, macroalgae uh, that grow in the ocean. We can harvest and take them from the ocean. They go with the tides to the shores, and we can. Uh, and this is the the most relevant in Europe. It, it's to collect the algae that come to the shores, especially in the coast of Brittany in France, uh, which is the opposite as what they do in China and uh, uh, Indonesia and Philippines. That is, they, they grow them in the ocean. In Europe, mostly uh, they, they grow and they, they are harvested uh, near shore. But uh, we can also have, uh, uh, here we see some other uh, collection of algae, in this case in, uh, um, in the Caribbean uh, region, where they also collect uh, sargassum uh, that uh, uh, arrives in the, in the region. So there are many places in the world uh, where they do that. So, but uh, going uh, uh, now to the microalgae, let's see the microalgae growing platforms that are, as you can imagine, very different. We change from very large uh, macroscopic things that to algae that we can see to some algae that we cannot see in detail. We can see uh, in aggregated form. Here, the situation is much more complex because we can grow also in the ocean, but there are no, no, no production, industrial production in the ocean, even if we can grow there in the ocean. There's uh, some production in lakes, in ponds, in photobioreactors, in fermenters, and in, in lab scale. So, here, we, there are uh, more possibilities um, uh, for technology. The examples of uh, growing algae in the ocean. Uh, it's mostly research, uh, still no production, because it requires that to have some plastic bags where the microalgae are inside, uh, and then the, these floating plastic bags are, are put in the ocean. So all the projects so far uh, to scale up uh, microalgae production to the, in the ocean failed. Um, and not, they are only research projects. Uh, the reason is quite obvious. So, so here you see some pictures. In, in the bottom right, you see uh, one in, uh, in, uh, in Korea, in South Korea, where you see more plastic than algae. 
the big uh, structures uh, where they are trying to, to have this uh, uh, plastic growing is a prototype, uh, but it, it's very difficult to have this kind of structures and uh, then the weather conditions and so on. So research only. This platform is possible, but uh, for research only at the moment. Then uh, we have the possibility to grow to these uh, uh, microalgae in lakes. There are many lakes. Uh, for example, for uh, Arthrospira, uh, spirulina uh, algae, microalgae, uh, we see blooms that exist in the alkaline lakes all over the world, and uh, uh, they are collected there. Here we have some examples in the right, the oldest production at the still uh, going on during the last uh, at least 300 years. It's in, uh, in Chad, in the region of Chad. There is a lake, Lake Chad, where the a tribe there uh, harvests every day, every, uh, every season, they harvest uh, uh, spirulina, uh, and to ma they make dihe, that is a, a product that they dry and they eat. And this is currently, I, I, I would stop a little bit in this example, because it's the lowest algae, uh, that ex lowest cost algae that exists in the world. So they sell one kilogram of spirulina for 0 0.8 US dollars. So it is extremely low price. But of course, it is not uh, ethical to go there and buy uh, the 80 tons that they produce because this is the main source of protein for the food. They sell this in the markets uh, as a food product and uh, uh, it is the, the main source of protein. So this is just to say that the cost of production depends on where you do it and how you do it. So it's possible to, to do as low as this. Uh, and also much higher prices. So, and then there are many legs. Um, here in the, in the right, in the left, left side, we have the famous uh, Dunaliala lakes, uh, where the, uh, Dunaliala grows naturally in uh, Australia, uh, that are now owned by BSF. And we have uh, Calmas uh, uh, company in uh, Oregon, um, uh, so where they, they, they grow, they, they harvest algae that grow naturally there, uh, Afanizomenum uh, cyanobacteria, Afanizomenum flozaque. So this algae can, can grow uh, in many different places. Lakes are a good example. Here again, some, uh, some lakes, in this case in Myanmar, uh, where algae grow, um, uh, in this case uh, spirulina, uh, blooms grow. They grow uh, and take them and harvest them. And as you see in the bottom uh, left, there are some ponds. They take the algae to the ponds and they have the final growing in the ponds. So the blooms exist in the lakes. It's extremely th thick. You see in the, the, this picture in the right is a, is a spirulina bloom. It's really thick. Um, but uh, uh, we can also grow this uh, in, uh, in uh, raceway ponds. So these are some examples of raceway ponds uh, that exist all over the world. So in the top right, uh, we see uh, uh, Cyanotech in Hawaii. Uh, in the bottom left, uh, we see uh, LEI in the United States. Then Tolo Green in the uh, bottom right, uh, bottom uh, you see in Italy. Uh, so many places, many many regions in the world. Uh, this uh, DIC is in China, uh, in Hainan Island. So very large uh, facilities in ponds, in raceways can be uh, deployed, and they already exist in a commercial scale. Then uh, let's go for the photobioreactors. Um, here you, you have some, uh, some of the largest photobioreactors. Um, more or less uh, photobioreactors can, that can be indoors, like this one uh, from Yemoji in Israel. There are similar ones in uh, Iceland, uh, all over the world for, for aquaculture. In bottom left, we have our microalgae that is the largest in Europe. It's 1,300 cubic meters, very large. Then we have some, some others in the rest of uh, Europe, in Germany, uh, Algamo in uh, Czech Republic, <coughs> uh, in the island of Porto Santo in Portugal, uh, 800 cubic meters. So a wide range of uh, uh, possibilities for scale up in photobioreactors. Uh, this, that's called BGG. It's the largest in the world. It is uh, 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 13, thousand cubic meters so one three zero 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 cubic meters it's huge it's uh, in china 
Um, so it's possible to scale up to, to very large large scale glass photobioreactors like the one you have here in uh, in um, in uh, Turkey. Sorry, Oops. I passed. Then we can another platform. It's to to grow the the algae in um, uh, in uh, fermenters. Here we have some examples. Uh, these fermenters. Um, the largest company is DSM uh, from the Netherlands, uh, but they have production facilities in the United States and uh, all over the world. Then uh, uh, we have also large production uh, in fermenters in, uh, in Japan, um, um, uh, in China, of course. Uh, uh, all over the world we have this uh, fermentation based. Uh, this is mostly for uh, chlorella. Chlorella is the autotrophic algae that uh, grows very well also in uh, heterotrophic uh, conditions, so it's uh, the largest production. But at the moment, the main production is uh, schizochytrium uh, for the production of DHA uh, to extract uh, uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids. Then there are some, uh, some uh, examples of uh, lab-scale uh, production facilities. Um, these large-scale production facilities are very important because uh, it's a new uh, uh, possibility for, for, for business. There are many products that uh, can be viable uh, in a small scale. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned, for example, some uh, uh, toxins uh, where the world market is uh, uh, half a kilogram, so, and can, they can produce, be produced in these uh, facilities. This, the large-scale photobioreactors are also very important to, 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 as inoculation devices for larger photobioreactors or ponds. So these are also a, a, a relevant platform. But um, now I, I showed you some examples of uh, uh, all these facilities. Let me take some water, thank you. Uh, going now to the global production. Um, <clears throat> I will show you some market information. <clears throat> Let's see what, what this means in terms of um, products uh, and what is the size of the market. So first, it is important to, to tell you that there are only three types of products from algae. One is that um, algae is a paste, sometimes live algae. Uh, then there is a, a, what we call uh, algae biomass can be also dried. This applies both to microalgae and to macroalgae. And then there are extracts that we can obtain from, uh, from the algae. So the value depends on uh, uh, where we are in the value chain. Uh, so we can have these three types of products. And I will show you further on some examples and some applications. <clears throat> But first, uh, let's see uh, about the size of the market. The market is very complex, the market for algae. And because of this, we ask to a company, a meticulous research that does market research, to check and verify our numbers. There are numbers from FAO, numbers from Eurostat, numbers from uh, uh, American uh, statistical organizations, numbers from, everybody has numbers, but the numbers are not accurate and they cannot be accurate. Unfortunately, uh, there, there, is a, there are some big difficulties. I will uh, show you <clears throat> about the numbers. But uh, here we can see the numbers, the global numbers uh, by sectors, where you can see uh, microalgae uh, uh, that are uh, autotrophically produced, heterotrophic, and uh, macroalgae. So we see uh, the, the, the the quantity, the, va the value in the production, the value in uh, when they are processed, and the value uh, at the consumer level. You will have copies of this, so you can see that this in detail later, but uh, what I wanted to show you here is that uh, value depends on uh, many things. For example, very often, uh, uh, macroalgae, are, all the statistical information are uh, wet weight, means that they are not dried. They are wet, so uh, as they have 80% uh, or more water, of course, the numbers are much, much higher, and it's uh, uh, and not reasonable to compare that with the, the microalgae numbers that are always uh, dried. They are dry weight, but uh, the, you can dry the, the algae in many different ways. 
the companies, for example, sometimes consider uh, ash free their weight, and other times they don't consider ash free. And this is represents between about 15% more. So the numbers uh, are very difficult, and uh, uh, unfortunately, there, there are not many um, standards in place. So numbers can change a lot, and it's very difficult to compare them because they have different ways of, of measuring the, how they are dried. So I go on, but I, I hope I, I gave you this, the, the problem of, of, of uh, calculating the, the, the number. So we asked the ABA, we asked an uh, in, independent organization to check the numbers and compare uh, all our numbers with FAO, with Eurostat, with all the numbers, so that these numbers are the result of this comparison and uh, uh, of um, analysis, uh, external analysis. So it is not easy, but the idea is to give uh, an order of magnitude. It's not to provide precise numbers because they are not possible. So the margin of error here is 20% at least. But it's better to have a, an idea about size than have no idea. So we also have here some numbers that show what are the, the macroalgae produced in, uh, in the Europe and uh, in the world, and we see the, the quantities, and we can check that uh, we uh, in Europe uh, produce and harvest different uh, macroalgae from what is produced in Asia. So the, when we want to eat sushi, we import uh, piropia, an algae from uh, Asia that doesn't exist in Europe, or it doesn't exist commercially. Um, it's possible to grow it, but we don't grow it. Um, so this is the, the, the situation. So uh, going, uh, going further, um, let's see uh, in more detail uh, now uh, about the macroalgae, the, uh, how they look like, how this macroalgae look like. So here we, we can see the macroalgae that we harvest from wild stocks in Europe, in the beach, in the ocean, uh, uh, sure. Uh, the macroalgae that we cultivate in Europe, there we cultivate it in ponds or in ropes in, in near the, the, the shore. And uh, then we see the macroalgae that are uh, cultivated uh, all around the world. And we see that there are different species. Sometimes they are common, but most of them, they are different. So this is uh, how it looks like. And uh, there is a wide variety of uh, species. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, the number of species that are cultured is limited because of uh, the novel food requirements. So to be uh, considered as uh, safe food, they have to pass uh, to the novel food requirements, and there is a, a bottleneck here. Uh, now let's go to see the microalgae, how they look like. So these ones can, can be very, very, very large, um, uh, meter size. So now let's see the images of the algae, microalgae. So in the microalgae, we, we, we have the autotrophically produced, um, uh, also produced in Europe, for example, and the heterotrophically produced in fermenters. So we, we can see how they look like. So you see that uh, this uh, algae can be uh, unicellular or they can be filamentous, uh, but uh, they are always very small, uh, size of micro size, so we cannot see them easily uh, in a microscopic way. So going to the market uh, applications. Uh, we, we, usually there is a global consensus that there are uh, eight uh, main uh, uh, market applications for algae. For food, for feed, for health applications that include nutraceuticals, for cosmetics, for fuels, for soil, uh, agriculture applications, for wastewater treatment and for chemicals. These are the main eight uh, uh, applications. Um, and these main eight applications exist for microalgae and for macroalgae. This is the interesting part where the, the two uh, meet together. They are very different in size, but in the end, in what uh, relates to applications, they meet together. Uh, so they have uh, common applications and uh, as we will see. So here is... Uh, a picture that shows how they meet together. In the left side, you have macroalgae and microalgae, and then we see that they provide different kinds of applications. Uh, so it is important to um, work together uh, if we see the, the algae uh, from the perspective of the applications. 
in the research and production, they are different, very different, and but in the applications, there are many common applications. These applications uh, translate into products, and this is my favorite picture because it, it summarizes everything about uh, the algae sector. It shows that there are products uh, that range from fuels to pharmaceuticals with everything in between. Nutraceuticals, soil applications for agriculture, feeds, uh, cosmetics. So this is why it is important, the pipeline of algae. Algae are very relevant because, uh, as Berat mentioned, they meet all the um, uh, sustainability goals, the de sustainable development goals. Uh, so 17, all of them, in some in more extent, some less extent, they are uh, relevant. And also they are relevant in products for many applications. That's why algae are so important and uh, why uh, should be uh, in the pipeline of uh, our research. So going to these eight applications, I, I will go uh, in some detail now to each of them. So let's see the fuel applications of algae. Uh, this is very relevant because uh, fuel applications for algae are coming back. They had a, a boom uh, about 10 years ago, uh, for, uh, algae fuels. Uh, it was not very successful. Most of the projects failed. The scale up failed. And I will tell you a little bit why. And then, um, they are coming back in a smarter way. So it was possible to, to realize that uh, algae can be fuels, but for very specific applications, not for being the global solution for fuels in the world. So algae will not replace oil because it is not possible to produce algae in such a large extent. So it's still a, a small production uh, uh, scale. So at the moment, micro, let's start with microalgae. There are some uh, projects where they produce very small quantities of microalgae and um, add this as biofuel. Uh, there is biofuel from algae. The first example is in, uh, in Japan. In Aquali, in Spain, they produce uh, uh, methane from uh, the microalgae that, that are produced in wastewater. So this is an interesting application. Algae can be produced in the wastewater. They are very differentiated. They are mixed with bacteria, with yeasts, with everything. And then they go to uh, uh, anaerobic digesters to produce uh, methane, uh, so uh, form of energy. Then there is a company in Japan, Eugolina, that is a very large company. They produce uh, jet fuel. Uh, and they uh, announced it. They produce, of course, a small quantity of jet fuel from algae. Uh, probably, we don't know exactly, but in the order of uh, uh, around 1%. So they add to the normal jet fuel 1% uh, of bio jet fuel. This is uh, maybe for many people a nonsense because it's more, more or less irrelevant. But what they say, and they are right, it's that we start with 1%, but maybe in two years, uh, 4%, uh, 8%, and as uh, biofuels, uh, we will be growing uh, uh, every time. This is their facilities for another algae that can be used for biofuel um, directly. It's Botiococcus. Um, Botiococcus is an algae that produces uh, directly um, botiocene, that is uh, a fuel that can be used directly in the uh, uh, engines, in um, normal um, combustion engines. Here is an example also be, uh, started in, in, um, with a, a similar reactor as what we saw a few minutes ago uh, here. Uh, uh, Total, the French company, oil company, has a, a small reactor like you have here in Turkey. Um, uh, to produce microalgae, and they do the first experiments uh, uh, in south of France for uh, biofuels. It's a very interesting project. They are EAB members as uh, your university here, um, and they are working on this uh, this topic. This uh, is another example from uh, uh, Japan. Uh, they are building uh, uh, small uh, in um, these green wall panels. They are building uh, uh, reactors for the production of uh, mostly uh, botiococcus and uh, other algae. Next one. Here is an example from India. In, in India, the company uh, uh, Reliance that uh, already invested hundreds of millions of uh, uh, dollars 
oops, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars for for the um, different algae projects. Uh, they have a, a, one of the largest facilities, uh, and you see the picture is recent. Uh, they have a, a, a large uh, for, um, raceway facility uh, for uh, the production of algae. Of course, they realized that uh, eventually the algae for, for uh, fuels, uh, when they produce the biomass, they have a better use for it, that is for feeds. So the algae they started to produce for fuels, then they realized that uh, there was uh, a requirement to use it for feeds, for uh, animal feeds. And they started to sell also for animal feeds, but they keep the research uh, for, for fuels. Uh, another one that started recently in Egypt. This project is in, in Egypt. Uh, they want to produce some uh, small um, pond-like devices to produce uh, 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 also small quantities of algae that can be further on used in biofuels. This is the only example that we could find uh, related with uh, seaweed, macroalgae, macroalgae for, for uh, fuels. Uh, it was uh, a research project that turned into, uh, it's still uh, in evaluation about turning into a, a commercial project. Now let's go to briefly see the wastewater uh, applications. Here we, we have uh, some examples, uh, uh, raceways uh, from um, usually wastewater uh, treatment plants uh, that where microalgae are inoculated in the ponds to consume the uh, nitrogen, nitrates and phosphates that exist there. So in the end, the biomass uh, is not only bacteria. Um, here are some examples of uh, uh, algae photobio, photo, not a kind of photobioreactors, uh, open photobioreactors, uh, reactors, algae reactors to, to, to produce uh, uh, algae in the wastewater to increase the, the, the production. These, uh, some are located in Algadisk uh, in Spain, uh, in Germany, in the United States, uh, um, uh, and uh, the bottom two are one in France and the other in Portugal. Now let's see uh, some more uh, applied one, uh, the use of algae for chemicals. So here we have one of the best examples, that is the production of uh, 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 algae for uh, polylactic acid, this is in the Netherlands, uh, close to, to Amsterdam, um, where they, they have some photobioreactors where they, where they produce this uh, polylactic acid that can be a fuel or can be a source of chemicals, uh, several chemicals that, that further on can be processed from this. This also uh, st uh, had a, a research project that uh, uh, to, to start the company's photonol. Then we have many, uh, and this is increasing, you, many examples of uh, plastics uh, made with, uh, with, uh, with algae, with algae extracts. So this is a, a clear trend uh, of the need of uh, uh, chemical applications for, for bioplastics. This is a, a, another one that is in a commercial scale. This is, uh, by the way, in uh, France uh, with the, the macroalgae uh, ulva that is transformed into uh, uh, bioplastics. Basically, they induce the production of uh, starch inside of the algae and the, the, the microalgae, and the microalgae is incorporated in the, in the, the bioplastics. Uh, everywhere is from uh, um, Indonesia, algae exists from the United States, Algopac from France. So there are many examples of uh, bioplastics uh, made with, uh, with algae. Then we have uh, uh, the applications for ink. This is a, a very relevant application to make ink from uh, algae. It's a bio ink, uh, biological origin ink, um, instead of a chemical origin ink. So basically they do the pyrolysis of the algae and then you have uh, different types of uh, ink. Then uh, ink is uh, uh, in uh, paper ink to uh, ink to paint walls and so on. So there are several companies, uh, so these already reached the industrial scale. Also, to uh, ink for um, clothes, for the, the cloth industry, uh, it's uh, a niche market, of course, but there is a, a, a requirement there because many people don't want to use ink uh, clothes that have uh, chemical inks and some even some are allergic to it. And this, we can have examples from uh, macroalgae, 
but there are also uh, some examples from microalgae. This is uh, an example of uh, paper, paper made with uh, with uh, with algae. Uh, by the way, my 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 business cards are made with this paper, Pavini Cartieri. They are algae paper. So um, if you want to see them, uh, just speak with me later. I, I'll show you. Uh, so algae can be used for paper. Of course, this is not 100% uh, paper with algae. So algae are incorporated in the in the process. It's just uh, uh, typically the incorporation of algae in this kind of products is five to 10%. Now let's see the applications for agriculture. This is extremely extremely interesting. The application of algae for agriculture because it also increases the um, circularity. There are, uh, there is a, a wider range of products. Typically, these uh, algae, they can be either microalgae or macroalgae. So here are some examples of microalgae. They are hydrolyzed and used as biostimulants in agriculture. And they have a very relevant uh, role in the, in the sector. So the current market size is uh, about uh, uh, 30 million euros, which is already interesting. It's a growing uh, market. And uh, the good thing about this is that uh, the microalgae to be used are very relevant, but they are hydrolyzed so, um, uh, with enzymes and with chemicals. So here are some examples. The first we saw the microalgae. Now we can see the macroalgae. Macroalgae are since a long time used uh, as fertilizers in soils. But what happened in the recent years was that uh, uh, technology came and uh, not just the raw dried algae was used in the, in the soil, but uh, the processed algae. So uh, again, uh, hydrolyzed algae uh, as biostimulants is taking over. So for many crops, uh, uh, biostimulants are, are made uh, with, uh, uh, with microalgae, and this is one sector where Europe is very strong. Here you have some examples of the products that are already in the market to show you that this is a reality. So microalgae for agriculture applications and macroalgae for agriculture applications are uh, uh, really there. There are many products. Now let's go to the feeds. It's a very important uh, area where uh, the algae can also be relevant. Let's see uh, examples for uh, microalgae for ornamental fish feeds. Uh, Traditionally, uh, uh, microalgae uh, like uh, spirulina, chlorella, and the uh, hematococcus have been used for ornamental fish to provide the colors and to provide nutrition. If you have an aquarium, uh, uh, you will see that if you go to see in detail about the feeds that you put in the aquarium, most of the times you, they have their written spirulina, that is uh, arthrospira, one of the main uh, algae used for the, this. And this is high value application. Then we have also the use of microalgae for aquaculture, um, aquaculture applications. Uh, you can have uh, in the form of paste uh, or live algae uh, that are uh, used for the uh, hatcheries, for the uh, first stages of, uh, uh, in the hatchery. So you, you can see there is a wide range of products all over the world. Uh, uh, microalgae companies produce uh, concentrates that later on are used for, for the hatcheries for the early stages in, uh, in aquaculture. And without microalgae, it would be almost impossible to have uh, the, the hatchery production of some fish, not all, but some fish require algae for the, the early stages. They can also be frozen. Uh, the pastes can be frozen and added to the, this, uh, or sprayed, uh, freeze dried. Uh, so, uh, also for, for aquaculture uh, applications. Here you have some examples, but uh, uh, of course, the main application at the moment that is hundreds of millions of euros, it's the replacement of um, uh, fish oils in the feeds. So the aquaculture feeds traditionally uh, have and had uh, uh, fish oils to provide the DHA and EPA content. And uh, now they are starting to be replaced with uh, uh, algae DHA. Of course, this is not yet uh, fully. The, the fish oil is still uh, the main source, fish meal and fish oil. But gradually, uh, it started to be replaced DHA by the uh, oil origin the DHA. So it's very relevant. This company, Vera Maris, also a ABA member, they are one of the main uh, players in the world. Um, uh, 
going to the applications for cats uh, uh, and dogs. Uh, this is a, a niche market, of course, but it's a very large, very, very, very large niche, niche, niche market. So everybody that has a, a dog or a cat at home, they need to, to give them feeds. They're not usually not just the same food they eat the, with the leftovers, but they need to, 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 to provide also feeds. Uh, and the, some of these feeds are based in uh, microalgae, but uh, there, are, there are also feeds for, with macroalgae. So for cats and dogs, microalgae and macroalgae are an important source of feeds. Of course, I must always mention, it's not 100% uh, algae. It's 5% or 2% or 3%, but uh, uh, even so, it is uh, relevant and uh, uh, it's advertised as an um, uh, echo uh, source. Another feeds for horses, for example, it's very common that the horses are, are, are using uh, algae feeds, um, uh, niche market, of course, but uh, uh, not all horse feeds, but some horse feeds. There is also... Um, from macroalgae, from microalgae, you see again here how the two uh, combine in the applications. We have, for the same thing, horse feeds, we have microalgae, we have macroalgae. Uh, again, uh, for animal feeds, farm feeds, uh, you, we can have also uh, uh, micro, microalgae. And um, here we see for, uh, in the farm, we can see uh, several microalgae, several macroalgae. Here is microalgae. Uh, Lithoptamium uh, to provide calcium for the feeds. Um, now let's go to the food. Um, for food, uh, uh, microalgae can be used as food ingredients. Uh, uh, so this is an example of odontella that is trying to mimic the, the, the food uh, uh, salmon, uh, uh, plant-based salmon includes uh, odontella because it's very rich in omega-3 fatty acids, so to provide the taste and flavor of, uh, of fat. Uh, then it can be used as uh, uh, for the other kinds of things, like example of um, uh, ice creams. Uh, these ice creams in the bottom are made with, uh, with spirulina. Um, popcorns, uh, beer, uh, pasta, everything. It can have uh, the inclusion of uh, microalgae in, in this. And this inclusion is typically 2%. 2% is the average number, but sometimes 3 5%. It looks like small, but uh, uh, it's how, uh, how this uh, uh, food ingredient starts. So here you see uh, microalgae in many applications. The limit of uh, algae in the feeds is because once you get uh, microalgae there or macroalgae, they take over. The, in the taste, in flavor, in the color, in take over everything. So uh, that's why you cannot use very large quantities. So here are many uh, examples. They can be used also in uh, uh, juices, uh, fresh juices. Uh, you have many, many different kinds of juices that, that have already chlorella. Uh, some of these are produced by Coca-Cola, uh, naked, uh, it's uh, worldwide, and it's produced by, by Coca-Cola, and they have uh, spirulina that is produced in California by Earthrise. Then macroalgae, there, there's a wide range of products, uh, including uh, ice creams and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, food, the colloids that you are used in this uh, uh, food is, uh, are contain macroalgae. Here are some examples of macroalgae that uh, are produced mostly in South Korea and uh, other places that contain, uh, uh, that are used for sushi and other applications. Um, as food ingredients, uh, algae can also be used for uh, making uh, plant-based uh, burgers, plant-based products in general, sausages, uh, uh, all kinds of products uh, with algae. Uh, again, I will refer that this is not 100% algae. It typically uh, three, five, uh, average two percent. Uh, some algae have very special tastes. For example, these algae dulse when prepared uh, in, a, in, a, in a correct way, tastes like bacon. It's called, considered the, the, uh, very interesting by the chefs in the kitchens. Uh, as food ingredients, we, we see a wide range of applications for burgers and other, other products. Now let's go to the cosmetics. In cosmetics, uh, in this case, is microalgae. We see uh, in green, you see the na names of the species, the scientific names. Uh, so uh, the idea is to show you how uh, a wide variety of microalgae that are already used in cosmetics. And these are high value applications. 
So a wide range of creams. Uh, again, typically it's 1%, but this 1% takes over when, when used in uh, 1, 2% takes over. Um, so microalgae, microalgae, some of the largest cosmetic names uh, like Biotherm and uh, other uh, include uh, microalgae and macroalgae, so for cosmetic. So you see here Talgo, uh, so brands that you, you know very well, so they use some small quantities of uh, uh, microalgae and macroalgae. Um, I go uh, a bit faster here because this is just uh, examples for cosmetic. The, the, these products are usually called cosmeceuticals because they are not uh, uh, only cosmetics. They have some uh, uh, activity uh, for enhancement of something. So they are called cosmeceuticals. Uh, here we see the examples for macroalgae. So there, are, there is a wide range of macroalgae. You see the names of the species. So it's not one, two, or three. It's a wide range of species. And now let's see the health applications. Um, in the health applications, we have the nutraceuticals, supplements, and the, the pharmaceuticals. Um, again, uh, what I stress here is the uh, 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 microalgae for food supplements. And uh, I would like to show you here the number of species. There is a wide number of species that are used uh, for, for uh, food supplements. Some of them are not uh, sold in Europe because they are not approved in Europe, but they are approved in the United States. And I will show you in the end that the regulatory issue is different country to country. Some are only sold in Japan. For example, Nostock is a very interesting one. It's only sold in China, um, but uh, there is a, a wide range still that can be uh, sold. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, you can have the dried algae uh, directly in the products, but you can also have extracts. You can extract compounds, specific compounds like these ones, phycocyanin, uh, chlorella go factor, EPA, um, uh, superoxide dismutase, beta-glucans, DHA. So there is a wide range of extracts that can be made from, uh, from uh, in this case, from microalgae. Uh, and then they give rise to many products. This is just an example of the variety of products that exist from one algae, spirulina, arthrospira. Uh, only this gave, gives rise to many, many, many products. Um, so another one is chlorella. Uh, both are, uh, are widely approved as uh, food, uh, so they, they, they are easy. So you see chlorella, many, many products in different formats. Um, Dunaliella, the same. Uh, also a wide range of, uh, of food supplements uh, from the same algae. The same algae, depending on the quantity, there, there is a, uh, a wide range. Uh, and the uh, hematococcus also, the, there is a wide range of uh, products. When then you have the algae and something else. In this case, for example, uh, the hematococcus and vitamin E, vit uh, collagen, uh, uh, other carotenoids, um, olive oil. So it's a, a, a wide variety. Um, and then uh, here, it's one of the most shocking slides. So this slide is shocking. Uh, I will stop a few seconds here because uh, it's a shocking one. So uh, one of the extracts that, that we can obtain from hematococcus is astaxanthin. It's the highest value extract in the world of macroalgae. So uh, it's the main business of extracts in the algae-related extracts. So, but what is interesting here, it's to see that in the market we have products that go from one milligram of astaxanthin per pill to 24 milligrams of astaxanthin per pill. And uh, uh, EFSA says that it uh, should be four milligrams per pill. Um, uh, FDA says it can be, um, how much? Uh, 12 milligrams per pill. Uh, so, a wide range of uh, regulatory agencies say different things, but in the end, the market, you have between one and 24. Of course, this is not dangerous to have 24 when the, the, the recommended dose is 12 or four, because maybe you are not taking the pill every day. You take one per week, for example. So the market has different ways of dealing with this. But this is just to show you how uh, the wide variety of uh, uh, applications and how the applications translate into products, okay? So going on, uh, 
this is the, the most expensive uh, uh, microalgae used for pharmaceuticals. So one flask, 575 euros, really expensive. <laughs> so I, 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 I brought this uh, just a curiosity. It's not only algae, but it's the algae-based product, more expensive uh, one, just to show you that it can go from uh, uh, two or three euros per, per flask to 500 euros per flask. So uh, the, in the algae sector, the variety is not only uh, diversity, is not only in the species, but also in the products, the final applications. That is a, a, an algae, uh, a seaweed macroalgae that, that is uh, a preferred source of uh, bioavailable uh, calcium. Um, the potential is enormous. Uh, the macroalgae applications uh, are also incredible. Here you see that there are um, macroalgae that can be used for wound dressing, drug delivery, tissue engineering, so uh, a wide range. And now uh, uh, algae for pharmaceuticals. There are very few, unfortunately, uh, pharmaceutical applications. The, the different thing is that to be a pharmaceutical, you need to address uh, some pain, some, some, some issue that you are going to cure something. So in this case, uh, uh, carrageenans uh, are used. Uh, Algovir is one of the few uh, products uh, exists on sale in Europe. And this, the, this other one, um, Oligomanan, it's very interesting because it's one of the few uh, products uh, that exists uh, um, for Alzheimer. So it was already approved in China and is being researched also. So uh, oligomanans uh, from algae, seaweed, from seaweed, from microalgae to for Alzheimer, this is an interesting product. And carriage laws, uh, uh, it's an antiviral also uh, from algae. Um, more applications from uh, uh, the alginates uh, are used already for, for since many years uh, from macroalgae for um, uh, pharmaceutical applications. Uh, in this case, for the gastrointestinal exophageal uh, reflux disease. So, uh, pharmaceutical application from uh, uh, macroalgae. And now uh, I'm almost finishing, so uh, I will have a slide about the regulatory. There are two main uh, regulatory uh, organizations in, in the Western world. It's the FDA in the United States and EFSA in Europe. Of course, there is another one that is even bigger that is in, in China. Uh, but Chinese uh, are following now the EFSA uh, rules. Um, and what, what I wanted to show you is that uh, uh, at the moment, the two organizations, FDA and uh, uh, EFSA, have not the same approvals. So what we are doing in the EABA, the European Algae Biomass Association, is to, to try to, to, to get from EFSA, this will take years, we started already two years ago, it will take years to have some kind of a recognition in Europe of the things that are already approved by FDA, so that the FDA pro approved products can be sold in Europe, because at the moment only if they are approved by EFSA. So this is a... a you see the number of species that are approved in the uh, in, um, United States are not the same as uh, in Europe. And this is a constraint for the development of the sector. No, so just now to finish, um, future products. Uh, I, I have a selection of things that I believe are the most interesting uh, future products. So this is uh, uh, very interesting. One of the future products, in my opinion, is fresh spirulina. So fresh spirulina is uh, 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 one of the future products that people should engage because it is not reasonable to spend uh, much money, so much money in drying. So when you dry, then you, when you are going to eat, you need to add water because you don't eat dried things, uh, powder, uh, spirulina, for example, for food. So foods with uh, uh, fresh spirulina uh, that is not dried, so you can reduce a lot the cost. It is a very interesting product. Another one is this uh, biogenic cement. So um, it is important to invest in biogenic cement so we can make a cement using incorporating uh, some specific uh, algae called the coco litophores that, are, uh, it get, that can be used in cement and reduce the, the, uh, the uh, carbon emissions. So to make a, a more um, bio cement. Another uh, algae uh, application is for um, uh, cellular agriculture. 
So algae should be should be will be used in the future for making culture and media, and there is a company here in Turkey doing that um, uh, culture and media for growing uh, animal cells uh, and uh, cellular agriculture. Then um, there is a trend uh, for clinical trials. So in the future, the it's not only enough to that uh, an algae uh, an algae extract is. Uh, approved for, as uh, safe for food, but there are clinical trials that show what uh, is the application, how, um, what is the relevance of that. Then uh, some other applications like the use of seaweed for seasoning, uh, when you uh, take some seaweed and use them as a, as a um, covering for food, you, you, you transmit the taste of the seaweed to the food, and this is an interesting application. There are also uh, applications um, uh, from toxins, uh, this is a, a, one of my favorite examples, uh, neosaxitoxin. The world market is maybe one kilogram, is used in uh, micrograms, but is a, a, pain, a pain reliever, um, and it's a very important uh, product. Uh, then there are many applications for, uh, um, in this case, for macroalgae, for, um, uh, for um, uh, reduction of methane emission in cow feeds. Uh, uh, so this uh, mac uh, macroalgae, uh, Asparagopsis taxiformis, uh, uh, and the Asparagopsis armata are being searched all over the world. There are about 20 companies working on this so that we can include this uh, macroalgae in the feeds in a very small quantity, less than 2%, reduces the methane emissions by cows in 80%. So this is a, a high impact uh, application. So there are some examples of companies. The, and the, finally, the, my favorite thing is the, I believe that in the future there will be an algae boutique where we can buy uh, all kinds of algae products um, uh, from clothes to cosmetics for, for everything. So uh, this is uh, the last, uh, last product that I think it's a great thing if someone creates a franchising for an algae boutique that sells all kinds of products. And that's all. I'm sorry that I took a little bit longer. Thank you for your lovely presentation and contribution. Uh, if you ask any question, you can ask right now, but <laughs> just two questions. Yeah, just two questions. Also, just want to remind you, uh, we will also have, you will also have a chance to ask your question during uh, post our presentation. Do you have any question? Okay, then we can continue. Thank you for your contribution again.